Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to see how integration can be used for many different things. Here we have what we call a circular cone. The radius, the, the radius of the base is 5, the height is 10, and we're trying to find the volume of that cone. Integration is perfect for, the, for that task, and let me show you how that works. Now, this is just a simple example. There's a limitless, a limitless number of examples that can be used, uh, that we can use integration for. Here's just one. How do we find the volume of a cone like this? What we're going to do is we're going to take a small little slice of that cone. By doing that, we're going to imagine the tiny little slice with a very tiny thickness like this. If you can see that, that's simply a little slice like that. Here is the radius of the slice and that would be in the, dis in the direction of the y-axis, so we're going to call the radius here y, and y is going to be determined where that slice is. If the slice is at the base, we know that it's five units long. If the slice is at the very top, we know it's zero units long. So there's some relationship between z and y, and we'll figure that out in just a moment. But to find the volume of that little slice, we're going to call that volume a small little dv, a small little change in the volume, a tiny little amount of volume. And of course, the thinner we make the slice, the less volume we have there. Of course, the volume of a slice like that would be the area times the thickness. The area would be, uh, uh, would be given by pi times y squared, that's the area of a circle. Now we multiply that times the thickness, and it's a small little distance in the z direction, so we're going to call that small little thickness, we're going to call that a small little dz, a small little change in z dz like this. To find the whole volume, what we're going to do is we're going to add up all those little slices. We're going to have an infinite number, not quite an infinite, but almost an infinite number of little slices. And when we add the, the volume of each slice together, we get the volume of the entire cone. Kind of like the way we did it for the area near the curve. We take a small little slice, we make another one, another one, we add them all up, and we get the total area near the curve. Here we take a small slice, and another one, and another one, another one, we add them all up, and that gives us the total volume of the cone. Integration tells us that the volume is going to be the integral of all the dv's. Remember that integral sign, that really means a sum of all the little slices, or the sum, yeah, in this case, all those slices in the cone. That means that this is equal to the integral of pi times y squared times dz. Now, since pi is a constant, it can come outside the integral sign, so this is equal to pi times the integral of y squared times dz. Now we have one problem here. We cannot yet integrate this because the variable y is not the same as the variable z. So we have to find a way to express y in terms of z. So we'll go back to the edge of this cone right here and that looks like a, a straight line that reminds us of the equation y equals mx plus b. But in this case, the vertical axis is z and the horizontal axis is y. So we'll write this as z is equal to my plus b. Now all we have to do is find m and find b, and now we have a relationship between z and y. We can then replace z, or in this case, y by z, and then we can go ahead and integrate that. B is the, what we call the z-intercept, and that happens at 10. So we can say that z is equal to m times y plus 10. Now we still need to find the slope, and the slope is by definition the rise over the run. In this case, it's a negative slope, and the rise would be a negative 10. The run is 5, so that means z is equal to minus 10 over 5y plus 10. And simplifying that, z is equal to minus 2y plus 10 is the equation that relates y to z via the edge of the cone. Since we need y squared, we need to solve this for y. Moving this to the other side, we get 2y is equal to, move this across, 10 minus z, because the z becomes negative, divide both sides by 2, we get y is equal to 5 minus 1 half z. And if we take this and substitute that in for here, we now have only the variable z in our integration sign. We can write this is equal to pi times integral of 5 minus 1 half z quantity squared times dz. Now we just have to multiply that out. This is equal to pi times the integral of 25 
5 times this times 2, that would be uh, minus 5z, and this square would be plus 1 quarter z squared. Put parentheses around that, times dz. Quick check, we have 25, we have 1 quarter z squared, 5 times this is 5 half z, times 2 is 5z, and it's a negative. All right, now we can go ahead and integrate that. This is equal to pi times, oh, and what are the limits of integration? Since we're integrating over the variable z, the cone goes from z equal to 0 to z equals 10. So our limits are going to be z equals 0 to z equals 10, and we'll plug that in the, in the, at the end. So when we integrate this, we get 25z minus 5z, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus 1 quarter z, add 1 to the exponent, divided by the new exponent, and evaluate it from 0 to 10. Now all we have to do is plug in the limits. When plugging the lower limit, we get 0, so we don't need to bother with the lower limit. We'll plug in the upper limit. Let me come over here, because I'm out of room. So we can say that the volume is equal to pi times 25 times 10 minus 5 times 10 squared over 2 and plus 1 over 12, that would be 10 cubed, like this. Simplifying this just a little bit more, v is equal to pi times 250 minus, that would be 500 um, divided by 2, that would be minus 250. Ah, that's interesting, that cancels out. And finally we get plus 1,000 divided by 12. And then times pi with a calculator, let's find out what that's equal to. 1,000 divided by 12, and then times pi equals, and we get 261.8. So the volume equals 261.8 Whatever the units are, that could be centimeters or inches, it doesn't really matter. So that's how we do that. Now, this is simply for illustration purposes. This whole section here on what is an integral first showed you what an integral is by definition, what we can do with integrals, how we usually find it to find the area near the curve, but it has many more uses such as this, where we can find the volume of any object, in this case the volume of a, what we call circular cone, and in this case, again, the principle of integration is that it's a summation of small little things. We slice it up in a very thin little slice where dz goes to the limit where dz becomes nearly zero. We have almost an infinite number of slices, add them all up. That's what integration is, and it gives us the volume of the cone. Exactly. It's an amazing thing. So there you go. There you have a nice little set of videos that show you what integration is and what you can do with integration. If you're interested, we'll have many, many more videos explaining how we use integration in various settings because that's really the difficult part is how to actually go through that process when the equations become quite complicated. But we have lots and lots of examples so that you can slowly get to mastery of how to do the various types of integration. And that's what we mean by integration.